reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 1. No. Chapter 2, Chapter 1. Text 16. Grihat Prabrajito Dira Grihat Dira Punya Tirta Jala Pluta Sucho Vivikta Asino Vidit Vat Kalpita Sane Grihat from one's home Prabrajita Having gone out, out. deed up, self-control, self punya, punya, pious, pious. tirta, tirta. sacred place, place. jala apluta, fully washed, washed. sucho, sucho. Cleansed. cleansed, vivite, vivite. Solitary. solitary, asina, asina. seated, seated. seated. viditvat, According to regulations, According to regulations. Kalpita, Kalpita Having done, having done. Asane, Asane On a sitting place Translation One should leave home and practice self-control In a sacred place you should bathe regularly And sit down in a, lo in a lonely place Duly sanctified Translation please repeat One should leave home and practice self-control in a sacred place, in a sacred place. He, should he should bathe regularly and sit down in a lowly place, duly sanctified. Purport, to prepare oneself for the better next life, one must get out of one's so-called home. The system of Varnashram Dharma or Sanatan Dharma prescribes retirement from family uh, encumbrances as early as possible after one has passed 50 years of age. Modern civilization is based on family comforts, the highest standard of amenities, and therefore after retirement everyone expects to live a very comfortable life in a well-furnished home decorated with fine ladies and children without any desire to get out of such a comfortable home. High government officers and ministers stick to their prize posts until death and they uh, neither dream nor desire to get out of homely comforts. Bound by such hallucinations, materialistic men prepare various plans for a still more comfortable life, but suddenly cruel death comes without mercy and takes away the great plan maker against his desire, forcing him to give up the present body for another body. Such a plan maker is thus forced to accept another body in one of the 8,400,000 species of life according to the fruits of the work it performed. In the next life, Persons who are too much at attached to family comforts are generally awarded lower species of life on account of sinful acts performed during a long duration of sinful uh, life. And thus, all the energy of the human life is spoiled. In order to be saved from the danger of spoiling the human form of life and being at attached to unreal things, one must take warning it of death, the age of 50 if not earlier. The principle is that one should take it for granted that death that the death warning is already there even prior to the attainment of 50 years of age and thus at any stage of life one should prepare himself for the better next life. The system of Sanatan Dharma institution is so made that the followers trained for the better next life without any chance that the human life will be spoiled. The holy places all over the world are meant for the resident, uh, res residential purposes of retired persons getting uh, ready for a better next life Intelligent persons must go there at the end of life and for that matter after 50 years of age to live a life of spiritual regeneration for the sake of being freed from family attachment which is considered to be the shackle of material life. One is recommended to quit home just to get rid of material attachment because a one who sticks to family life until death cannot get rid of material attachment as long as, uh, uh, and as long as one is materially attached one cannot understand spiritual freedom. One should not, however, become self-complacent simply by leaving home or creating another home at the holy place, either lawfully or unlawfully. <clears throat> Many persons leave home and go to such holy places, but due to bad association, again become family men by illicit connection with the opposite sex. The illusory energy of matter is so strong that one is apt to be under such illusion at every stage of life, even after quitting one's happy home. Therefore, it is essential that one practice self-control by celibacy without the, last, without the least desire for sex indulgence. For a man desiring to improve the condition of his existence, sex indulgence is considered suicidal or even worse. 
Therefore, to live apart from family life means to become self-controlled in regard to all sense desires, especially sex desires. The method is that one should have a duly sanctified sitting place made of straw, deer skin and, and carpet, and that sitting on it, one should chant the holy name of the Lord without offence as prescribed above the whole process is to drag the mind from material engagements and fix it on the lotus feet of the Lord. This simple process alone will help one advance to the highest stage of spiritual success. So continuing the theme of uh, detachment, uh, as uh, explained here by um, Sukadev Goswami, especially at the end of life. But uh, as Prabhupada explains, it can be throughout your whole life. And it really, if it can be throughout your whole life, that's better still. But certainly at the end of life, because, you know, one is uh, death's coming up, as is the case, uh, as was the case with Parikshit Maharaj. Uh, he knew he only had seven days to live. And so he wanted to concentrate on his uh, spiritual advancement but everyone and the the general prescription is given here uh, too many uh, attachments uh, you know one lives the life uh, uh, the family life and of course the, uh, the, uh, builds up all sorts of uh, uh, assets and houses and, and uh, comforts and so on and so forth uh, business uh, positions in society uh, and then it, it's uh, to live a long life like that and then if one is acting very simply on top of that uh, this is a very a dangerous position for your next life uh, because uh, uh, you've got this life a human form of life and, uh, and, 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 and this human life is, is best utilized in spiritual advancement uh, but if we don't uh, uh, utilize that and just indulge in materialistic activities and then at the end of life, whatever you're, uh, you know, uh, concentrating, wherever your attention is, and that will certainly be influenced by what you've been doing your whole life, uh, and according to your karma also, then the next life is awarded to you. If someone is uh, uh, too attached uh, um, to sex indulgence, for example, uh, then one will get a, a, a body in the next life uh, suitable to uh, uh, engage in that attachment. Maybe one will come back as a monkey or something like that in the next life uh, or uh, any other species of life. One's uh, too attached to, uh, let's say, one likes to sleep a lot. <coughs> I used to have a friend that used to sleep 16 hours a day. <laughs> we, we, we used to call him, we actually used to call him the bear. <laughs> So uh, maybe in the next life you'll come, you know, because bears hibernate, for, you know, like to sleep a lot for six months, they, they hibernate. They like to sleep, maybe next life you'll come back as a bear uh, or, you know, a monkey. Or if you like to eat anything and everything, uh, you know, just like the hog, the hog just eats anything and everything, maybe next life you'll come back as a hog or pig. Uh, or you like to eat a lot of flesh, meat, blood. Uh, like that next life you'll maybe get a more appropriate body for that type of thing maybe come back as a as a, a tiger or something like that that likes to um, you know eat flesh and take blood so the different bodies are, more, uh, are, are awarded to someone who has been uh, indulging in certain ways with uh, material attachments and someone who is back acted very simply then he has to get reactions to that as well it can be, it's not just, uh, I was reading one uh, account uh, where uh, one in the, from the uh, account uh, mentioned in the Garuda Purana, one account of uh, a Brahmana who met a, a Buddha and uh, was able to see him, the Buddha was able to manifest his form to him. And, uh, and uh, the Buddha, and, and the Brahmana said, how did you end up a Buddha, a ghost? How did you end up a ghost? And uh, <coughs> well, he said, actually, I used to be a Brahmana. <laughs> <laughs> but then I engage in many sinful activities and I have to get the reactions. And in, you know, and he actually said, and it, I had many lives in, in lower species of life. Uh, uh, and then, uh, you know, I was at 10 lives uh, as a dog and uh, so many lives, 14 lives as a pig. <laughs> so, then again, I came to the human, but then I did sinful activities very much again, and now, now I've got the Buddha for <laughs> So he explained all these things to the Brahma, 
So I said, but I'm feeling very blessed because you're a great, a wonderful Brahmana, uh, you're a Vaishnava, so I'm very fortunate now that I'm having your association and I have the power to manifest myself to you. So this was a story that I remember from that, that is an account of someone who actually remembered their formula. Normally people don't remember, it's taken away so you can start afresh. But sometimes someone's able to remember. So it's, it's, it's a fact that, you know, whatever you've been doing, and if you've got some, uh, you, you, uh, or, or of course you've got the karma there, and you get the reaction, so a combination of all those things will give you uh, uh, the next life. And it may be, uh, you know, any species, Prophet actually mentions 8 million, 400,000 species, and many species of life there are. Uh, and so you can go into any one of them many times over. So it's it's here it's mentioned it's a, it's a waste because you've come to the human life and, and it's like a junction point you can especially concentrate on your spiritual life if you can do it your whole life as I said just wonderful especially at the end of your life try to free yourself here is mentioned the punya tirtha punya tirtha <clears throat> go to the holy places. Uh, of course, people, it's, it's not so easy if, if someone's led the whole life, they're very attached. Prabhupada mentions high, um, uh, you know, high positions in society, uh, in government, for example, high posts, ministers, prime ministers. Uh, I was uh, remembering uh, um, uh, the story of, uh, of uh, Prabhupada when he was always writing, uh, early on in his life, he was a follower of Mahatma Gandhi. And, uh, <clears throat> but then he met his spiritual master and became uh, uh, more focused on, on that, uh, uh, on spiritual activities. Uh, of course, his whole life he was a devotee, but he became more focused. And, and, and throughout the, 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 the so many years, he tried to contact Mahatma Gandhi, sending him magazines, writing letters, uh, but uh, they were never answered. And the secretaries would explain, well, uh, the Mahatma gets so much mail, he gets a flood of mail, he can't tend to all this mail, and certainly he can't read magazines. But then there was one letter that Prabhupada wrote again, and he says, this is your unknown friend. Some of the devotees may remember this, that uh, he wrote, and he wrote this <coughs> letter in uh, December uh, 19, December 7, 1947. At that time, uh, it was mentioned that Mahatma Gandhi was a broken man because he had, his whole life, he had tried for unity. But then when the partition came, when the uh, independence came uh, from the British, uh, the, all the different groups were pushing for their own areas and, and, and instead of a united India, it became a partition, you know, the Muslims wanted their Pakistan and, and, uh, and so on and every, every. So, it, so it, even his own secretary wrote, uh, he's a, when you see the Mahatma these days, he's like a sad picture. He's a sad picture, so he's a very sad person that he couldn't achieve the united India that he wanted. Uh, uh, but uh, and, and the Prabhupada was writing to him again and said you stay and at this, at this stage 47 he was like 78, 79 years old he said you've lived a long life you've tried to achieve many things but that, you, that haven't come to pass and you're staying right even into your old age in uh, the high position <coughs> in, in government you should retire you must retire otherwise uh, 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 you, uh, you, you, you will may meet an inglorious death just like Hitler and Mussolini, <laughs> you know, they're in top in leadership, but things went wrong, <laughs> and then they were they were executed, or, or they they committed suicide in the case of Hitler. Uh, uh, so you will meet an inglorious. Uh, so at, at least at least re retire for one month, and 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 let me come and be with you, and we can discuss Bhagavad Gita and all these things. You know, but of course that letter went unanswered. Now, interestingly enough, a month later, where Prabhupada said in his letter, that you will die the inglorious death, just like Hitler and Mussolini. A month later, in January 30th, 1948, which is just over a month later, when uh, Mahatma Gandhi was, uh, he finished his uh, evening meal and he, he did some work on his, on his, he used to work on the spinning wheel. Uh, uh, and, uh, and then he w walked to his prayer meeting, which was his habit every night. As he walked there, he was shot and assassinated three times in the chest and he was killed. Uh, it is said that he chanted the name of Ram, 
But uh, nevertheless, he met his end in an inglorious way like that. And that was just like a month later after Prabhupada had written that letter to him. That, uh, so it was almost read like a prophecy. Although that went unanswered again. Your unknown friend Prabhupada. So he, he said, don't stick to right to the end of the life, retire. Prabhupada himself showed uh, in his life, of course, uh, he was a, a, a family man and had children and whole family and he ran a business and, and, uh, and a pharmaceutical uh, uh, and uh, all different types of medicines and things like that. And he went around, quite often he would go traveling. He, he, he was working out of Calcutta, he was working for someone in the beginning, then he was working, and then he went up and up factories in, um, in I think Lucknow and uh, and uh, and uh, um, Prayag, and then later on again in Prague in Allahabad. Uh, so he was always going away from home, uh, uh, and gradually, gradually, as he got older, he was becoming more focused on. Uh, the whole time he was engaged in spiritual activities, uh, um, but unfortunately, his his family, although his wife. And children were pious. They were religious. They weren't. They didn't participate so much in the in, in his. Uh, sometimes he would have programs in his home, and invite the uh, brahmacharis and sometimes sannyasis to come and do the program. But as mentioned, that his family wouldn't involve themselves. In that. Quite often they would be sitting upstairs and doing whatever they were. It is mentioned that his wife, Radharani, who was you know, a pious lady, but she wouldn't participate. She had mentioned one, one place, such a remark, mentions that she was upstairs drinking tea and eating biscuits and stuff like that. Probably didn't like it. And, uh, and uh, he always wanted them to come down and, and, and get, get involved in it, but they would just, just sit upstairs. And then, uh, of course, the property was coming and going a lot for the business and everything, but gradually everything decreased on the business side and he became more and more detached uh, in that even in Allahabad, there was a, the, the, he had a factory in Allahabad and was, uh, he was robbed and he started that uh, Jansi, the League of Devotees in Jansi. So by, when Prabhupada was 50, 1950, when he was 53, 54, he was becoming more detached from family life. And as mentioned, the final straw came when Prabhupada went home one time and uh, uh, he found out that, uh, that his wife, because the, the, the money was less, so his wife had taken his Bhagavatam and had taken it to a shop. In those systems, they used to have a barter system. Uh, where you would put something, the shopkeeper thought it was valuable, he would put it on a scale and then he would match it on the, that something that you thought was valuable on the other side of the scale. So she took his Bhagavatam in and the shopkeeper put it on the scale and, uh, and he put uh, tea and biscuits on the other side. <laughs> Uh, on the other side of the sky, so the Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam, and then when he went looking for the Bhagavatam, that's when he found out that, that <laughs> she'd sold this Bhagavatam for some tea biscuits. So that, that was kind of the last straw for Prabhupada. He said, that's it, you know, um, he'd been coming and going, and we'd be coming more, the children were all growing up now, so he said, now um, I'm leaving the family life and I'm, <laughs> I'm going for the spiritual life. So uh, Prabhupada himself showed like that. He was after 50, uh, later on, of course, I think uh, when he took sannyas, uh, he was like um, 59 or something like that uh, uh, later on, uh, 60. But, uh, so, but at the end of the life, one should retire and, and go to the holy places. Uh, um, as mentioned here, Punya Tirtha, I had the good fortune, especially in the 80s, of visiting many, many of the holy places in India. Uh, in the 80s, the Indian government, uh, the, through the tourist department, ran for foreigners. They ran, uh, if you purchased, uh, you could purchase, pay $500 American, and you could uh, fly anywhere in India for three weeks. You couldn't, stay, you couldn't, you couldn't go to the same place twice. Uh, but you could take as many flights as you wanted. It had to be done in 21 days. You could take as many flights as you wanted. So naturally enough, I took advantage of it. So I just went everywhere, <laughs> all the holy places. And I did this for four or five years. Oh, no, about three or four years, and then they, they stopped the program. But uh, uh, but uh, and I visited so many wonderful, you know, from the Kanyakumari down in the south to right up in Badrik Ashram in the Himalayas, and many other holy places all over. So it was very wonderful being able to go. They're very very wonderful. Punya Tirtha, they're, they're very sacred places, very spiritual places. 
uh, uh, punya. Uh, to, uh, it, it, it's very wonderful for you to do that. You get the imbibe the, the, the spiritual atmosphere. But of course, one has to be careful, as Prabhupada mentions here, that uh, he says actually, if you in the end of your life you can go and even live there, uh, that that that's very very good. Uh, because you know you build up attachments your whole life, and if you can go and live there, that that's very very good. And then you you just you're, every day you're in the holy place, you attend all the different uh, functions at the temple, and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, here some other things are mentioned that when you go to the holy place, uh, don't allow yourself to go back into the materialistic mode again, even in the holy place. Uh, you can that that's quite easy to do, especially if you've lived the whole life of indulgence like that, even you go to the holy place and then you, you know, you set up a place there and it becomes just like, and you just mainly engage in materialist activities without concentrating on spiritual. So Prabhupada warns against that at the end of his purport. Uh, uh, he says, many persons leave home and go to such old, but due to bad association, again become family men, e either licitly or illicitly. The illusory energy is so strong. Uh, so, uh, therefore, there's, pre there's pre certain prescriptions when you go there, uh, you know, follow uh, uh, certain procedures, bathe regularly, engage in spiritual practices, chanting, all these things, very, very wonderful. And now, of course, this is a general instruction, but uh, um, it is mentioned that someone can make their home uh, a Tirtha. And uh, in, in fact, in the story of uh, uh, Kurma Brahmana, some of you may remember this story from Chaitanya Charamrita. When Lord Chaitanya, uh, he went traveling uh, after he was in Jagannath Puri, he went traveling all over India, especially and he went started off going in the south. He went to one place, uh, Kurma Chetra was a wonderful temple of uh, Lord Kurma, I was able to go there also one time. Lord Korma, and then he went to a village, and there was a Brahmana in the village who was named also named Korma. And and when wherever Lord Chaitanya went, he was so beautiful and he was so much in ecstasy, and and chanting and dancing, everyone was mesmerized by Lord Chaitanya. They would they would just be uh, just amazed to see him. A very very beautiful personality, very effulgent very much in ecstasy and they would start chanting and, and actually many people followed Lord Chaitanya wherever he went and quite often he would get invitations to people's homes to, to come there for for lunch or to even stay there. Korma invited him to his home. So he stayed there and, and, and uh, uh, after some time Lord Chaitanya left to keep traveling and but Korma became so attached to Lord Chaitanya so affected by Lord Chaitanya, when, when Lord Chaitanya left, he followed him and, 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 and went to him and said that, let me travel with you, I want to, you know, the family life, it's so entangling, I just want to be with you and travel to all the different holy places and concentrate on my spiritual life. But Lord Chaitanya actually advised him not to do that. And there's a wonderful section in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, he said, no, uh, you, you go back home. <laughs> he, said, he said, don't speak like that again. <laughs> he said, He said, don't speak like that again. Better remain at home and chant the holy name of Krishna always. Uh, Prabhupada actually mentions here that it's not advisable in the age of Kali to leave one's family suddenly. For people are not trained as proper brahmacharis and grihastas. So Prabhupada does mention here training in the in the Varnashram. So if one's trained, then automatically throughout the whole life, one's trained to be detached. And then when, when at the end of the life you come to retirement stage, then you can detach yourself. But to all of a sudden, uh, uh, it's better to remain with the family and try to become purified by chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra regularly under the direction of the Guru. If this principle is followed by everyone, there's no need to accept sannyas. In, uh, uh, in the next verse, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu advises everyone to become an ideal householder by offenselessly chanting the Hare Krishna mantra and teaching the same principle to everyone they meet. And then in the next verse, very famous verse, Yare Deka Tarika Krishna Upadesh Amara Agara Gurahana Tare Desha. Very famous verse. Prabhupada would quote it quite often. Instruct everyone, this is Lord Chaitanya speaking to Koma. 
Instruct everyone to follow the orders of Lord Sri Krishna as they are given in the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. In this way, become a guru, a spiritual master, and try to liberate everyone in the land. Uh, Prabhupada said, this is the sublime mission of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Uh, people, many people come and inquire whether they have to give up family life to uh, join the society, but that is not our mission. One can remain comfortably in their residence. We simply request everyone to chant the Hare Krishna mantra. Uh, if one is, can read Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, then all the so much better. And uh, so uh, this is the instruction. Now, uh, while living at home, one should live a very nice life by uh, chanting and engaging in spiritual activities. One should be uh, uh, self-controlled. Uh, uh, one should in indulge in uh, materialistic and especially sinful activities, uh, and, and so on and so forth. And, and, and then Lord Chaitanya says, Kabuna badi be tomara vishaya taranga. If you follow this instruction, your materialistic life at home will not obstruct your spiritual advancement. Instead, if you follow these regulative principles, we will meet, we will again meet here, or rather, you will never lose my company. A very important instruction. So one can uh, uh, make their home. Uh, of course, Prabhupada's situation was a little different, uh, and also he had a big mission to perform for the whole world, and that's sort of the arrangement. Uh, actually, uh, when he, uh, uh, he twice, his guru came to him in, in a dream and said that he should take the sannyas, total renounced order, for the mission of spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world. So uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left the family life at, at a young age, uh, and Prabhupada actually mentions that he, uh, uh, the, he, he left the, the, the small area of his immediate family to adopt the whole family, the, the family of the world. Uh, to spread, if, if one has a mission to spread, sometimes these things. But of course, if the situation is that in the family, if the family is a great assistance and your home life is not an impediment, everyone's, the whole family is spiritual, then, that, that, then, they are, then, you are, then your home becomes a tirtha. Your home becomes a tirtha. So we probably even said no need to take sannyas if the situation is like that. Uh, but nevertheless, Prabhupada did <coughs> encourage all of us devotees uh, and, uh, to uh, go to the Holy Dharm. He said that, yes, the temple is there, but because you are going out, I remember this, you are going out <coughs> and you're mingling with very materialistic people sometimes. Sometimes one gets affected, but when you come to the Holy Dharm, there is the Holy Dharm, there is nothing else. <laughs> you're in the Holy Dharm, uh, you know, when you're in, you're in, uh, in the other countries, uh, you're, you can go to the temple, you can engage in the, but then you have to mingle and sometimes according to your level you get affected. And so, but when you come to the Holy Dharm, you're completely immersed in that situation. Completely immersed in there. So the Mayapur Dharm, of course, the Vaishnavas. Properly encouraged, uh, you come to Mayapur, uh, Holy, Dharm, Holy Dharm of Mayapur, you come to Brindaban, uh, uh, and uh, of course, uh, um, one can, if one gets a chance, they can go to Jagannath. One time we went to Jagannath Puri, uh, and uh, uh, I don't know, I think Jagannath Puri with Prabhupada, I'm, not, I'm just thinking whether Prabhupada went to Jagannath Puri, but, uh, but uh, with, with Prabhupada, because Jag, Prabhupada went to Jagannath Puri, but I, I remember going to many places in India, these holy places, so wonderful. But be, be careful, one has to be careful. Actually, there's a statement from Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur that even he says that if one is going to the holy place and visiting the holy place, don't stay longer than three days. <laughs> because, uh, because we're not yet very high on the high level of advancement. If you stay longer, you may get too, uh, uh, too what's the word, uh, um, uh, familiar, yeah, too, too familiar. There and, 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 and because we're not advanced, uh, you, you may be, start to commit offence. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur even recommended like that, don't go too long uh, because you live there and start committing offences and that's, that's not very good. But nevertheless, if one can do it and visit the holy places, uh, many devotees uh, do it. Uh, uh, it's very recommended, especially at the end of the life, and even one can consider uh, just moving there and living there. 
in the holy place. Of course, here we've got a very wonderful holy place. This whole area is very wonderful. You can come and live either here or nearby here or visit here regularly. So uh, it's very wonderful. And, and proper, as mentioned, all over the world there's holy theatres. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, so, and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Korma that uh, I will always be with you. If you follow my instructions, uh, uh, you will never remain apart from me. <coughs> So Prabhupada actually uh, m mentioned many times that he never felt lonely even though he was away from the family because he was immersed in the Krishna consciousness uh, and, and, and Prabhupada always felt the presence of his Guru Maharaj and the presence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Uh, so that one has to immerse themselves in that way because uh, if one is not immersed like that then one can feel loneliness, feel Anxiety, you know, material attachments come up again, and uh, and the, the illusion, the, the illusory energy is so powerful that anything can happen at any time. And so association is very, very much recommended. Strong association, uh, because even in the holy place, uh, one can be if one doesn't have strong association. Uh, but when you go there, don't go just to, uh, for like on a, with an attitude of just sightseeing. Uh, uh, go there to imbibe the the, the mood, the, the transcendental mood of the Holy Dham. Uh, unfortunately, many of the holy places now, uh, the, the because many in India, many pilgrims go to the holy places, and so uh, some of the big hotel chains have opened up hotels all over. Uh, I know in Jagannath Puri, for example, they advertise it as the honeymoon place. You know, <laughs> go and have your honeymoon in Jagannath Puri, <laughs> and uh, you know, and so because and many big hotels there. And in fact, up in Rishikesh and uh, Haridwar, there that area, there the the big hotels put up there, and, and they introduced all this, uh, you know, meat. They had meat there and all this, and so the uh, you know years ago the 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 sadhus got together and made a complaint against the hotels. And 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 uh, and went to see them and asked them not to. This is a holy place. Don't serve the meat and the flesh here. And but they, no, no, we have to do like that because many people come. And so uh, the the sadhus took them to the court. <laughs> you remember? They took them to court, and uh, the sadhus won. <laughs> I think the hotels appealed it, and then the sadhus won the next case. <laughs> So, uh, uh, so unfortunately, it's become a little bit like that. But still, you can go there and uh, imbibe, try to find out what is the leelas of the place, engage in your spiritual practices when you go there. Uh, don't go just for uh, uh, with a sightseeing attitude and, and, and like that. You know. So I'll read this verse again. Griyat prabrajito dira punya tirtha jalaputa. Sucho vivikta asino vidibat kalpitasane. One should leave home and practice self control. In a sacred place, he should bathe uh, regularly and sit down in a lonely place. In a lonely place, a duly sanctified. Any questions? Come on. Yeah, Prabhupada said that there's a difference between Krishna consciousness and Krishna No, no. He, 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 well, I can't sp speak for others. <laughs> it's, see, he was a, a Ram Bhakta, from what I understand, and uh, uh, he he would. Uh, and as I mentioned, that when he was shot, it is said that he chanted the Ram Ram like that. You know. So uh, this is going by what the stories are. But his whole life, he, he was a, 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 a you know a devotee of God. Especially, he was a Ram Bhakta. But he used to encourage uh, all the people from whatever faith to uh, follow uh, the, their, their, their religious principles, whether one was a Muslim or, a, or, or whatever they were, a Sikh or whatever, he used to encourage everyone. Uh, but he himself, from what I understand, he was a, a Ram Bhakta. So, yeah, definitely not an impersonalist. Uh, of course, he, he was engaged in a lot of political activities, trying to bring about independence and all, all that type of thing. And Prabhupada contacted him on many occasions, but he, he never got a reply. <coughs> and what, that one last letter, unfortunately, from um, again, it proved very prophetic. 
that uh, just one month later he was assassinated. <coughs> Thank you. Any other question? Yes. I'm wondering if you can share something a little bit because now, now not so much in the movement, it's not very common to take sannyas. Can you early. move it a, a bit? Now a bit further away, yeah, further yeah, away. yeah. Take sannyas early in life, mm. but, but uh, myself and other devotees uh, and when Prabhupada was present and, and, and took sannyas at an early age, I'm wondering if you can share, do you think that special mercy from Prabhupada, how that, that has been common? Well, early on, because Prabhupada uh, wanted, in the mood of Sula Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, uh, um, you know, he, he wanted to have many sannyasis to spread the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And not, you know, and not, you know, because, you know, with the family you have to work and earn money, and, and so you could only do it part time. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta had that, and he had many sannyasi disciples. The Prabhupada, in the, in the beginning, uh, thought that to spread the movement, he did it with Grihastas also, you know, as you know, I mean, he, Grihastas went all over. With more detached Grihastas he would send all over the place, but he thought with sannyasis all they could really concentrate. So in the beginning, uh, that Prabhupada very much encouraged it, but after some time he saw that some of the sannyasis, because they were young, they were falling down uh, from their vows and, and he, he wasn't so favourably disposed to that. And so now it is, it is uh, uh, you know, in our society, uh, there are certain procedures to, uh, strict procedures to be followed if one wants to go into the sannyas ashram. Although that's, that's kind of more rare these days that someone goes uh, into sannyas, especially at, at a young age. Uh, most of us, Abhanu Maharaj, myself, and many of the early devotees, were, we took sannyas at an early age. But n now I think there's a, there's a rule that you've got to be 45, 45 or at least 45. Even then I think it's too young. <laughs> but, uh, if I had my way, I'd make it, I would make it 60. <laughs> what? what the, Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, well, that's right. Yeah, if you if you want to take sannyas at 45 or whatever, then you got to wait five years, and they got to you got to follow all these procedures, and they got to interview you and make sure you you're okay and all this type of thing. And uh, so these days, it's uh, it's a little different from the early days. And, and, and there were old people in the movement, and the oldest person was probably 35 years old. What's, what? Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We were, I mean, Prabhupada didn't, there weren't old devotees around. <laughs> Everyone was young, you know, so, you know, uh, so therefore he encouraged. But then he, then he, then he changed, his mood changed. Uh, but now these days, it's a, there's a whole procedure to go through. But as, as, as uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, says, and Prabhupada says, is no, if one is uh, engaged in, as a, in family life, and you're engaged in following everything nicely and spreading Krishna consciousness, there's no need to take sannyas. No need to take sannyas. Just stay in your situation. Uh, I, I know many devotees who are very elderly, and both the husband and wife are really into spreading Krishna consciousness. So, you know, actually that situation is better. Uh, because as, as uh, 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 Grihasa, they can kind of mingle a little bit more freely uh, and, uh, and uh, but sannyasi is a little bit of a distance there, so in many ways it's better to uh, do it from that platform. Did you want to say something else? Uh, yeah, well, that was what Lord Chaitanya emphasized. Yeah. He didn't emphasize sannyasi, he said whatever the situation you're in, yeah. you take to Krishna consciousness and you preach, that's all. Right. <laughs> so whether you were not or don't or not, it really didn't matter. Mm. But in any case, you get Krishna mercy because you would accept Krishna and you preach, so, and you get a match like that. So right. You Right. Yeah. And my, my, many of his disciples, but most of his disciples were Greek husbands. Oh, well, not disciples, but followers were Greek husbands. All right. So thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Jai Sala Prabhupada Ki Jai.